I didn't do it. You know, you could put someone's eye out with that salmon. The game is too small. I can't see unless I'm up close. No, no, this won't do. Here, put this on. Why am I wearing this again? Because it's funny. To the theater. Come. <gasps> wow. Hmm. You know, it's still a bit small. Timmy, hit it. Yeah, boss. Now, it's big enough. Oh. Now we can play. Big, small, 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 big. Darius was always a beautiful and trippy looking game, and seeing it for the first time in HD is an eye-opening experience. Replacing those jagged, aliased, low-resolution polygons with an upscaled, anti-aliased image makes it look like a whole new game. And if you're wondering how I got it to look so damn good, the answer is emulation. This video is captured playing on my PC, upscaled 5 times to 1080p resolution. And holy mackerel does it look good. But why am I showing you this footage? Because it's the closest I can come to what it'll look like on the new Revelations collection coming in just weeks. G is an awesome game, full of some of the best set pieces ever seen in a shmup along with the biggest and baddest bosses around. But I'll admit, the polygonal graphics are definitely looking dated at such a low resolution. Now in 1080p, it's freaking gorgeous. And if you're looking at this thinking, man, I can't wait to play it this way, then you should be as excited as I am about the new release. As unless you play it on PC like I'm doing here, this is what you'll be looking at. Whether it's on PS1, the PS2 Title Legends Collection, or the arcade original. Now there aren't a ton of versions of G Darius, aside from the arcade and the two Sony ports. And while I'm going to explain some differences between them, none are so different where you couldn't play either one and enjoy them much the same. So I want to focus on the game itself, why it's easily a top 2 Darius game right next to Gaiden, and why after playing it in HD like this, I really don't want to go back. 2D sprites have that old school flair, going as far back as the NES, despite the low resolution and simpler graphics, they were beautiful, and while they only got more so through the generations, you can still go back to an old 8-bit classic and enjoy how cool it looks. It's not just nostalgia. The games are simple, but are still pleasing to the eye. The opposite is true with 3D. There's nothing, I mean nothing uglier in the realm of retro gaming than low resolution blurry graphics and muddy textures. You can forgive the low polygon count. That has its charm, just like here in G. Darius Upscale. But it's everything else that makes some of the games so hard to look at. Low res and compressed textures just don't do the artistry justice. Few would argue that simply upscaling these older games, along with higher res textures and anti-aliasing, isn't like putting on the nicest pair of beer goggles and enjoying the ride. And so it is with G. Darius. I can't believe I've never done this before as making this video felt like playing the game for the first time again. All of the incredible artistry in the backgrounds, enemies and bosses just came to life. 
to play a game like this that I have so many times before and get the warm and fuzzies on stage after stage. If there was a point where I clearly preferred Gaiden simply for the beautiful 2D sprites and designs that aged far better, playing G Darius in HD seriously makes me question which one I still like more, as they're both just so damn good. And for those that always thought G Darius had superior gameplay but just looked a bit rough, now you'll have the best of both worlds. For the upcoming collection, not only can you expect it to look this good, but it'll also be a direct port of the arcade original, and not the console ports. That means instead of the ultra-compressed video sequences we had on consoles, we can expect the in-game rendered cutscenes of the arcade. The PS1 port was excellent, and because the hardware is so similar to the Taito FX1B arcade board, it was very well done. But there were limitations, so it has more slowdown than the arcade, as well as compromising texture quality. And speaking of slowdown, not every version was the same. The PS1 port has more of it, and it's more noticeable, while the Taito Legends PS2 release has less of it, less than the arcade even making it extra hard, as if G. Darius needs to get any harder. You can see by the timestamps that the PS2 port at the start of the boss is a full 28 seconds ahead of the PS1, as everything is moving faster. While you'd think the PS2 port is the best, it's essentially the arcade port only, so it's missing the PS1 extra features like the beginner mode and boss rush where you can practice any boss or any combination. A huge help in learning these behemoths with multiple stages. So no matter which version you play, you're missing something. The upcoming release rectifies that by incorporating the original slowdown from the arcade, as well as adding back convenience features that M2 is known for. If you watched my top 5 hardest shmups on the PlayStation video, you already got the lowdown on this game. Like all in the Darius series, you get branching paths, totally 15 stages. But on top of that, each stage has a branching path, with a completely different section and boss variant, depending which way you go. So a total of 30 different combinations. G Darius is also unique with its capture ball mechanic, where you grab enemies and turn them into allies. And once they're doing your bidding, you can either release them as a bomb, or more importantly, charge them up into an alpha beam of destruction. This becomes especially critical on bosses, to counter their own respective beams, and kill them much faster than you otherwise would. It's a critical part of the game strategy, and the harder levels and bosses are not survivable without it. Heck, they're barely survivable with it, as this game is hard. So all the extra training features that M2 hopefully includes will come in real handy. As there is so much content in G Darius to enjoy, so many beautiful and trippy stages to explore, with a favorite being Genesis, this alternate dimension that feels like blasting your way through a primordial suit, along with a creative and psychedelic boss to match. And where before, the game's difficulty all but ensured most players would never see it, a host of training features by M2 for stage and boss selection would be amazing and expected. And if you're thinking, well, I could just emulate like you here for free on my computer and get it in HD, you certainly can. But know that the emulation of this game is glitchy. Sure, it looks great here for the video, but the audio trips out regularly, either cutting out completely or even worse, sometimes becoming distorted and painful on the ears, forcing me to turn it off completely. And if you emulate the PS2 port, which is more stable, you'll be playing with no slowdown at all and no training features, which unless you're a super player of this game, difficult would be an understatement. Expect to use save states. So a well done HD port of the rare arcade game, along with a host of extra features, is more than welcome in my book. Okay, so you're sold. You love Darius. You love 
G Darius, and the prospect of a great HD port is enticing. But that's just one part of the collection, as also included is Darius Burst, another Chronicle EX Plus. And unlike G Darius, which I've known and enjoyed since the PlayStation days, Darius Burst is a game I completely missed and didn't get to play or explore until this week for the video. So I downloaded it on Steam and cranked it up on the ultra-wide monitor for the arcade-like experience. I say arcade-like, as not much in your home can replicate the actual cabinet of Darius Burst. Not only did it feature a massively wide screen, similar to the original Darius in the arcade, but a sound system built into the seating that would actually vibrate the bench during key moments while playing. They dubbed it the Teatro 50, and good luck replicating that in your home. It would take two of my ultra-wide UWQHD monitors side by side to even replicate the aspect ratio and a modified butt kicker in your seat for those good vibrations. Stay tuned folks and I'll show you how to do this at home. Since I'm no Darius Burst expert, not having played it before this week, I can at least give you my initial thoughts, and my first impression was how much like an arcade game it actually feels, not just from the wide screen aspect, but the entire experience. For starters, each contained route only lasts three stages. You get to choose your path from the outset, easy, normal, or hard and you can beat the entire route of those three stages in a matter of 15 to 20 minutes. That's not to say it lacks content, as like any Darius, there are lots of stages to explore, 12 in total here, so there's plenty of replay value across its dozen stages. But each route is like a perfect, bite-sized chunk of game time that you can play through quickly, specifically made to keep coming back and trying different routes. And just like G Darius, these bosses take a pounding and a long time to kill, often longer than the stage itself. They're creative as heck, each with several different types of attacks, including the occasional undodgeable attack if you don't know what you're doing and get caught in the wrong spot. But just like an arcade machine, you have a free play mode, the equivalent of credit feeding. This lets you practice any of the stages and bosses all you like until you can figure them out without having to start over and over just to have them slaughter you. The difficulty curve is also fair, with the easier routes being good for practice, while the harder routes being pretty challenging, if not as ridiculous as G Darius. With all that screen real estate, it also supports up to four players simultaneously. And with that many players comes ship variety with several options, including ships from the original series, Gaiden, G Darius, and other variants. Each requires its own strategy to play. Some are better for beginners, while others are advanced but can achieve higher score multipliers. The big gimmick in Burst is, you guessed it, the Burst Weapon. It works similar to G Darius, where you can unleash a powerful beam but it's been expanded here. It's now charged by killing and shooting enemies with a gauge right below your ship. You can now also deploy your beam as an option by double tapping and even adjust the direction and angle of fire. This became one of my favorite features as it opens up each area to a ton of strategy and playing it different ways. The beam isn't just for killing enemies, but will also block incoming bullets. So instead of dodging a barrage, you can deploy your option and create a wall, destroying almost any shot it touches, and opening up some very creative ways to survive more difficult stages and bosses. 
The beam will also recharge as it fires, so by deploying it strategically, you can continue to destroy waves of enemies, and the gauge will remain charged, as you're killing things faster than it depletes. Imagine the walls and cooperative strategies this creates when playing multiplayer. This one feature was a lot of fun for me, and separates the gameplay in this Darius from the others. I found myself using it this way constantly, as it's a lot of fun, and added a new dimension to the game. On that same token, not all the ships have a burst laser, like the Gaiden ship that employs a black hole bomb instead. So your strategy when playing will vary. The other thing that really made this feel like an arcade-style game was the scoring. Darius Burst isn't an easy game, but it's also not as brutal as G. Instead, you can tell the stages and enemy patterns are designed around scoring. The longevity is similar to a caravan, where each stage isn't just about survival, but about how high a score you can rack up doing it. It's similar to Ikaruga, where playing for survival is fun, but not necessarily the main point, as once you take the chaining into account, the stages become a different game, and with the shorter 2-3 to three minute length, they're perfect for playing over and over and figuring out how to get the highest chains and not miss any enemies. You have a multiplier that shoots up as you kill successive enemies and goes down if you get hit or resets at death, and within that multiplier, you get additional boosts by killing enemies with the burst laser, counter burst, and other methods. And that burst option I talked about enjoying so much, well, it doesn't give you near the bonuses that other methods do, like killing entire formations with the main laser. So I'd have to change my strategy completely when playing for score versus cheesing the burst option that I like so much. Different ships have various multiplier caps, so while more advanced Silverhawks may not have a burst laser at all, or shots may not reach as far, their multiplier cap is many times higher than the others. Darius Burst is very much a skill-based shooter at heart, so players that enjoy arcade-style scoring runs will find a lot to like, and a lot of replay value. But if I'm making it sound like the game is sparse and the only replay is from repeated scoring runs, that couldn't be farther from the truth. Darius Burst is actually known for its insane amount of longevity. In addition to the base 12 levels, there's also the EX Plus mode, which adds three more difficulty levels for all the original stages. And it's not just a matter of more bullets, but altered stages, along with new enemies, more of them, and some varied bosses too. The types of shots the bosses fire become very different, and some feel like new battles entirely. The arcade also had event modes that were never ported to the Steam or any other versions. So for the first time on this collection, the 13 arcade events will be available, along with 8 new event modes created specifically for this release. These eight new events will feature six brand new songs created by Zuntada composer Shohei Tsuchiya, and one of the events is being touted as an endurance run, the longest Darius stage yet. Other notable additions will be a new ship called the Murakumo, taken from the CS version of the game, along with a full replay mode that M2 is known for. But for the replays, M2 is taking it to the next level. Much like their other releases, you can download replays of others to watch and learn. But for this collection, they are adding something called a ghost feature. When you download a replay, you'll see a ghost image of the ship from the player to follow their movement, along with a ghost score, to either try and optimize your score by learning from how they play, or just to see how poorly you're doing against the much better player that you downloaded. Either way, it's a really cool feature that I'm looking forward to seeing in action. And I can't let my impressions go without mentioning the music, which is way better than I expected. I watched some older reviews of the Chronicle and CS modes, and some of those tracks were a bit... Uh... So 
Yeah, kind of like Cats in Heat outside your window at night. But the music for the arcade, Another Chronicle, is outstanding. Stage after stage, they were the perfect blend of upbeat and atmospheric, with voices that simply blend with the music, almost as if their own instrument, versus taking center stage and sounding like you're at an opera waiting for the fat lady to stop singing already. Check out a few of these tracks real quick and how well done they are. I could see myself wanting a CD of this music as it's epic and upbeat, yet relaxing and atmospheric. It could make for some great background music while driving up a mountain or on a long trip. According to the official Taito Twitter feed, the new ACEX Plus mode is for the arcade modes only. The original Steam release also included Chronicle and CS modes. It's not completely clear yet if the Chronicle mode will be included, as the information available is inconsistent. In the official trailer, you can clearly see the Chronicle mode exists in the menu. Gotta be there, right? And on the website, the language makes it sound like it's using the PSP, PS4 game as its base, which included it. However, in other Twitter texts and interviews, comments were made to suggest it's not being included. So it may be this release is focused on the arcade and new event modes, or it may also include the Chronicle mode. The jury is still out. If you ask me, I'm all about the main arcade modes, and I had a good time with Darius Burst for the few hours that I spent playing it. And the only way I was able to discover so much of it and talk about it for this video were the wealth of options, allowing me to explore the majority of the game without having to bust my balls for several hours, figuring out the more difficult stages, and constantly starting over. The free play mode is a great way to explore and learn the game, and I'm sure that M2 will be adding even more training and convenience features. Overall, I've just barely gotten my feet wet with Darius Burst, but I've enjoyed what I've played so far. Just go in expecting a very arcade-like experience for short blasts of play, and I think you'll find it has a lot of gameplay depth. The more time you put into it, it's very well designed, and I'm looking forward to trying out all the new event modes. February is a crazy month, not just for the Darius Revelations collection, which you just watched, but also for Darius Extra, a physical release of the original game coming for the Mega Drive. On top of that, you've got the Cotton Reboot coming out the same day, which I already did an in-depth preview and comparison for, and you can check out right here. So I hope that videos like this, the one I did before on the Cotton Reboot, and before that on the M2 Alesta collection, are helpful in deciding which ones you would want to get first. So what do you think, Timmy? Want to go another round?